Okay, so now Q is fixed and we want to find a linearization of R in the point Q. Okay, uh, now uh, assume that U is a solution to our forward problem. So it solves the Helmholtz equation for this fixed Q. So delta U plus K squared times one plus Q times U is zero. It satisfies the initial conditions. So U on L1 is F naught, DU over D mu on L1 is F1. And then the operator, our measurement operator is given by R of Q equals U on L2. L2 is not a very good, has not been a very good choice, but L2 is line two, right? Okay, um, now let's look at how does the measurement change if we change the Q a little bit. So assume that we have Q equals Q plus DQ and um, let DU then the change in U then we should have that uh, if we if we go from q to q plus dq then the u changes as well and we write uh, the new solution as u plus du and of course if dq is small D, du should be small as well Okay, um, it needs to satisfy the uh, Helmholtz equation, of course. So it, the Laplacian of u plus du plus k squared uh, times one plus q plus dq, oops, times u plus du should be equal to zero. And uh, now using that delta u plus k squared times one plus q times u is zero, uh, this just means that uh, delta or no, Laplacian of du plus k squared times one plus q times du should be equal to minus k squared dq times u. So this is this one, that's what's left of the u over here. And uh, we have a term minus k squared dq times u. Okay, uh, now here's the problem that we already encountered. Um, this is now, on the left-hand side, we have uh, a linear term or linear um, partial differential equation. That's nice. But on the right-hand side, we have a dq and uh, that dq, um, the, uh, oops. I thought there was a mistake, but there wasn't. So um, we're trying to find a linearization of du. So let me go back. Yeah, this part over here, that's a linear equation in, uh, that's um, a linear partial differential equation in du, so that's fine. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have one term which depends linearly on dq. That's the first one, and that's great. So these, uh, but this one over here has the product of dq and du. So um, if I take that into account, then du will not depend on dq in a linear way. However, this part over here, dq, uh, assuming that dq is small, so we have only a very small shift, and assuming then um, that means that also the difference in u is very small, right? I mean, um, if I change dq a little bit, then du will also just change a little bit. So this one over here goes to uh, goes to zero linearly with dq, and this one goes quadratically to zero because dq goes to zero linearly and du goes to uh, zero linearly as well. This does not, uh, this is actually not sufficient, but it, that's the idea behind it. So this one um, is very small and actually I leave it out and I uh, define a linear, linearization of our problem in the following way. Um, I just leave out this part over here and then I get a new differential equation, um, linearization, a small, um, um, simplification of the Helmholtz equation. And that would be delta du tilde plus k squared times one plus q du tilde is minus k squared times dq times u. I leave out this over here. And um, 
uh, of course, it has to satisfy boundary conditions. But since U already um, already satisfies the boundary conditions, du uh, on, on L1 is F and uh, du uh, F naught and du uh, over d mu uh, on L1 is G. Um, the difference operator should be so that d uh, du tilde should be zero on L1. So I have this boundary condition. Okay, so if I define du tilde as the solution to this problem, then definitely two things should be correct. First of all, du tilde depends on dq in a linear way, number one, because it's a solution to this linear equation. And um, du tilde should be, for at least for small dq, du tilde should be similar to du because this one over here is small and we would expect that uh, the change in differential equation does not matter too much. Okay, so now let's go back uh, to our operator. R of Q plus DQ was the same as U plus DU on the line L2. That was our definition. Um, for R of Q plus DQ, to compute that, I need to compute the solution of the Helmholtz equation with the contrast function Q plus DQ. And uh, that's what I defined over here. That's u plus du. And uh, of course, uh, that means that it's uh, the same as u on L2 plus du over L2. So it's u over L2 plus, well, if, uh, now I write not uh, du, but du tilde, which so, should be a good approximation. So uh, this now is u on L2. That was the measurement that we make for uh, for the contrast function Q. So that's R of Q plus R prime of Q times DQ and uh, yeah, plus DU tilde on L2. And we already saw that this depends in a linear way on DQ. The way is uh, we need to compute the solution to this equation over here and then evaluate everything on, um, uh, on L1, on L2, excuse me. And uh, so uh, that depends on um, uh, on um, dq in a linear way. So uh, that's some operator r prime of q times dq. Okay, um, so we now have a linear linearization. That's nice. And um, now we need to. Um, well, let me first sum it up. So uh, if I want to compute R prime of Q, what do I have to do? Um, if I want to compute R prime of Q times DQ, so the, um, the um, derivative uh, at the point Q applied to some difference function DQ, then I need to compute the solution to delta DU tilde plus K square one plus Q DU tilde is minus K square U times DQ. And uh, where u is the solution to the perturbed Helmholtz equation with uh, contrast function q, and du tilde uh, on and, um, du tilde on d nu should be um, should be zero on L1. So with this boundary condition. Okay, so uh, we can actually compute the derivative. The question is, how do we compute the adjoint? And that's what we'll do next.